Hey kids, welcome to Funky Science. I'm Professor TJ and her assistant Nelly Welly. And today we're going to do a cool experiment. Well, well. But before we start, let me tell you something about this experiment. Balloons come in various shapes, colors, and sizes. Balloons are rubbery and stretchy. There are areas of the balloon which are more stretched than others. In this experiment, we aim the skewer for the center of the end of the balloon. We will therefore make a balloon skewer. If you have ever eaten a mishkaki, then you will get what I mean. This is what we will require. A sharp wooden skewer, balloons. And remember kids, always have an adult supervising you as you do this experiment. Safety first, always. So then you ready? Are you ready to start? Yes. Pick a balloon and blow the balloon. Blow, blow, blow. Blow the balloon. Okay, that should be enough. And then I'm going to take it from you and tie it. And look for one that's quite sharp. And then we're going to poke a hole from this end to this end. And are you ready? Yes. Okay. So you pick the sharpest? Yes. Yes. Make sure your skewer is sharp enough huh? to poke a hole from one end to the other. So poke a hole. Ah, can you see? It's poked a hole. Then poke it to the other side. Can you see? Oh, why is it fast? Hold the balloon. <laughs> there are areas of the balloon which are more stretched than others. If you try to pierce the balloon from the side, that is, where it is most stretched, the balloon rubber will tear itself apart due to the elastic tension over the rubber. Piercing the balloon through the bottom of the balloon is the best place. The rubber has less elastic tension and the rubber itself will grip onto the skewer due to friction. This is a great way to show that science can be found in all sorts of places. Hey kids, welcome to Funny Science. I'm Professor Teaching and her assistant, Nelly Wendy. And today I'm going to show you how to make a sufria using a balloon. Wow! But before we start, maybe I should tell you something It's impossible to boil water in a plastic bag, let alone a balloon. Balloons are rather fragile things. You know that they must be kept away from sharp objects. They also need to be kept away from flames. A fire can weaken the rubber and cause it to burst. However, in this experiment, you will find out how you can hold a balloon directly in a flame without the balloon bursting. Two balloons, a candle, matches, water, and a funnel. And remember, kids, always do this experiment with the supervision of an adult. Safety first! Certainly. Can you start? Yes. So, now you ready? Pick up a balloon.
The water in the balloon absorbs the heat given out by the candle, so the material of the balloon itself doesn't burn or burst. But watch out! If you turn the balloon so that the candle flame is not close to the side of the water, the balloon will pop because the water is not conducting the heat away from the surface of the balloon. The suit on the bottom of the balloon is actually carbon. The carbon was deposited on the balloon by the flame and the balloon itself remains undamaged. A real life example of this experiment can be seen when the oceans regulate climate. Earth is made up of land and oceans. It has more oceans than land. The water in the balloon prevents the balloon from melting. The water takes away heat from the balloon. This is how oceans regulate climate. They take away heat from the land and prevent us from burning and bursting like the first balloon. Hey kids, welcome to Funky Science. I'm Professor TJ and her sister Nelly Wendy. And today we're going to do a fun experiment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But before we start, let me tell you something about this experiment. If you've ever been tasked with blowing up balloons before a birthday party, you've probably wished that the balloons had a way of inflating themselves. With this simple science experiment, you can make that wish come true. This is what we will require. Vinegar, balloons, a funnel, a plastic bottle, a spoon, and baking soda. And remember kids, always have an adult present as you're doing this experiment. Safety first, certainly. Now you ready? Yes. You ready to start? Yes. So let's open our bottle. And then I'll give you the vinegar uh -huh. and pour it into the bottle. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like you to pick a balloon. Any balloon. Uh -huh. And then using our funnel, yeah. we'll put it in. You see? Yeah. Okay. Then using our funnel, I'll take some baking soda and put two balloons. Shake it until it's all inside. Is it all in? No. Yes! yes. It's all inside. Fantastic. Then, I want you to stretch out the mouth of the balloon uh -huh. and cover it over the mouth of the balloon. So stretch it completely and cover it over. Fantastic. Now let's just make sure it's all the way. Okay, fantastic. Now let's do a countdown. Uh -huh. Three, two, one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So three, two, one, flip it over. And... The secret of this experiment lies with the vinegar and baking soda common household materials that when combined create carbonic acid. Carbonic acid breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. This experiment uses carbon dioxide to fill the balloons, giving the illusion that the balloon giving the illusion that the balloon is self-inflating. experiment we will learn about air pressure as we learned from our first video air pressure is a weight of air particles pressing down on the earth this awesome activity will help you learn some interesting facts these are the materials you require a thumbtack or pin two clean dry plastic bottles and balloons so now you're ready yes yes, yes. okay so what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you something a bit interesting. I'm going to put this balloon inside the bottle and then the mouth. So you see, I'll stretch it over. And the mouth of the balloon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. 
Now, I want you to try and blow this balloon and see if it blows. Just blow, it will burst. Blow. Hada, blow, 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 blow. Come on, blow. How are you, Chicks? Try it. Try it. It needs to work. Let me not hurt you any further. <laughs> so I'm going to take my other bottle. I'm going to take this balloon this time. Uh -huh. And I'm going to put the balloon inside the bottle and then stretch out the mouth of the balloon. Yes. That will cover the mouth of that bottle. Yeah? Yeah. Sorry, Lydia. Yeah. Again. Then I'm going to take my out that. Then I'm going to make a hole like this. You think I should make another hole? Yeah. Good luck. Mm -hmm. One more. Oh. Cool. And I should do the balloon. When a balloon is blown up, air is moved into a compressed space to inflate it. However, when the balloon is placed inside of a bottle, there's no hole. There's no place for the bottle's air to escape. The pressure that occurs from blowing on the balloon isn't as great as the pressure inside of the balloon. In this instance, the balloon simply won't blow up. When the compressed air can escape via the hole at the bottom of the bottle, the balloon can expand. I hope you at home were able to do this air pressure experiment. This is all we have for you today. See you next time on Funky Science. Bye!